Hello everyone. Welcome to the MicroFocus Identity and Access Management video series. I'm Kent Purdy, Product Marketing Manager for Access Management. And I'm Paul McKeith, Identity and Access Management Specialist from MicroFocus. In the other videos, we showed how Access Manager could deliver secure access to applications and services out in the cloud or in hybrid environments. In this video, we're going to show how to use the risk-based authentication feature in Access Manager to adapt the authentication type to the level of risk at hand. So you, you, you're telling me you'd like to see this, eh, Kent? Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'll take us right into our administration console right from the start. So here you can see that we're in Access Manager. This is our default administration console, but I focused in on the risk-based policies and rules that will govern access from an authentication perspective before people actually get access. So when they're authenticating, what kind of authentication are they going to need or require before we allow them into that particular application? Okay. So on this dashboard, what you're seeing is, is basically our risk policy. I can have a number of risk policies. I can add those risk policies to different applications at different times for different purposes. So I can mix and match what I need in terms of risk level to the application or what we're actually accessing, okay? So on this, what you're seeing is, is a, a couple of rules that I've already configured and a dashboard here that tells you what's gonna happen for the administrator that's gonna build these. So for example, if I go ahead and turn this rule onto a pass or a fail, you can see on the right how the access, the access or the meter, the level changes so and it what, actively does this. Yes, Kent? So what did that rule do when you switched that? Ah, that's a great question. So the very first rule in this one, this one's actually one to look at, am I from the internal or external network? If I'm on the internal network, I have more control over that, right? It's the old, I'm inside the firewall, I've got lots of controls on devices, access to the network. So I wanted, that's a risk level that if you're outside the network, I wanna change that risk level. So that's the first thing I'm checking here. So if I pass, you can see when this rule is met, then it's gonna lower my risk score. You can see it's 455. Right. If I'm outside, that's going to fail, and that's 505, it increased my risk. And you'll note that it also denied my access. But if I'm a, I am on the inside of the network and I hit pass, and then I check to my next rule. So my next rule is not only am I gonna see if I'm inside or outside the corporate network, but where in the world am I coming from outside the corporate network? That might be for a, a, a North American based company that may be specific to a state, a city, the whole country, or for worldwide, it may be a lot more, you know, uh, widespread availability. But still, that's a level of risk that I want to check based on my business. So you have your inside the building or you're out, out and about traveling somewhere. What other kind of rules can you build? Ah, uh, well, we can build lots of rules and I'm going to show you a bunch of those. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here is, is that as these rules are here, you see these risk scores. Yep. And each one of these, as we pass and fail, you notice that they would do things, right? We get access uh, based on, on the pass fail. But they also categorize this risk into risk levels. So that's why I can build as many rules as I would like, calculate those, assign a risk level to that particular scenario so I can get really, really complex or really, really simple like this based on my risk uh, posture that I, I have for that particular application. So it could be one rule or a half a dozen. Exactly. You that's perfect, right? Because we can put in as many rules as we need. And again, I can have multiple policies and have a different policy for different types of applications. So if I go up here and I take a look at all of the rules that I can, my palette of rules that I can choose from, this is where we start. So I'll start over here on the IP address. So that very first rule that you saw, the internal IP address check, I can check and see where you're coming from. Are you an internal network address? Are you an external network address? And I can build that policy. And I can populate that from your network. I can populate it from the administration council here in a number of ways. Then that second rule in there was about geolocation. So geolocation, this is where I can go, okay, now I'm gonna find out where this guy is coming from and see if that's a risk that I'm willing to tolerate or not. The user profile says, okay, now that I've identified who the user is, is there something special about this particular user? For example, this is a, bridges over a little bit into privilege access management, which really isn't what this is, but this augments that in the sense that a privilege user, an administrator of a particular application, may get access only when he's on the internal network. Or if he's on the external network, I'm going to require a, an even more stringent rule set in order to allow him access. Or this just may be, you know, I don't like Kent, so I'm going to create a rule that doesn't allow Kent into go. this application. As simple as you want. Exactly. 
user history is a way for us to go look at the pattern of the past. So how often has Kent logged in? How often has he actually been granted access? Maybe if this frequency is normally once every week, once every day, that's fine. I'm going to let that pass. But user history allows us to look at your pattern of behavior to add that in as a as a input to one of these rules to see, okay, he hasn't done this in 30 days or 60 days. Let's go ahead and increase that risk level that we talked about. Device fingerprint is an interesting one. So I can fingerprint the device that you're using, each device that you use to access these resources. I calculate that fingerprint during the authentication. And if it's a device I've never seen before, I'm gonna, again, increase my risk score, require you to enroll that device or so that I can, or Access Manager can identify this particular device associated with you so that the next time I say, okay, it's Kent using the same device, okay, we'll let him through. Uh, and the next time, oh, it's Kent using a different device. Are we sure this is Kent? Right. Right. So this is a way for us to auto, with, to fingerprint the device, auto enroll you in that fingerprinting process. So as opposed to making sure there's some nasty, stringent policy that you have to somehow, you know, uh, grant access to that specific device and tie it to you specifically in another way. This is a lot easier way to do it. User cookies. Probably, it's, there, there's a lot of use for it, but it's not as much as it used to be. This is the old way of right. doing access and that sort of thing. Yep. But what's kind of cool about this is that Access Manager can build its own cookies, again, based on the level of access, put it down in the workstation, we can use that too, because that tends to be a ubiquitous, always works on every type of device scenario. Also, these types of cookies we can use, you can mint your own cookies in your own applications that we can look for as well. Oh, so you can build those rules out. too. Yeah. ACD pay headers is an interesting one as well. This one can be same thing. Your applications can put headers into the application that we can go look for, see if they're in there, what the values of those headers are, and use that as a risk posture analysis tool as well. That can also be done at your network layer. So we, we talked about how the IP address can represent if I'm inside or outside the corporate network. Well, if your network infrastructure can inject a header, which this is commonplace, then we can interrogate that header. So we'll know that your, your actual physical network hardware went in, took a look at, at what you're doing and injected a header that we can look for as well. So it gives you ne another level of surety that that is who the user says they are and it's using it from a place that we trust. Right. Got this one on top. External parameters, yeah. It's the last <clears throat> one, even though it's up at the top, right? Yep. The reason I, uh, that I covered it last, even though it's up at the top, is this is your um, golden ticket to anything you want. This is right. a way you can reach out into other systems. We've had some customers reach out into the network hardware at, at a very granular layer and ask it questions that I can then use as an evaluation. So I can pull in any type of risk from other systems and pull that into this risk calculation to affect that risk score, or as we talked about before, just simply deny or allow access because of a particular scenario. So. I like that, that's really cool. Well, thanks, Paul. You're welcome. So there you have it. For those that haven't built a, a risk-based policy, you now know how straightforward it can be. For those of you advanced users, stay tuned because coming soon, we'll have uh, integrations with more advanced analytics. Meantime, please take time to check out our other videos.